Hey everybody, it's me, your Anne. Your Anne is back. <laughs> Mo and Jay, hey, how's it going? Hopefully my dashboard will update and tell me that I actually have viewers right now. It's like, you have zero viewers. These people that you're seeing are imaginary. Purely imaginary. All right, let's do blue liner white. And let's get some actual pure black. Where is my actual pure black? It's hiding around here somewhere. Hmm, I could use something like ram black or tire black or coal black. I wonder... Hmm, that would go, that would be interesting. We could try that, actually. We can try that. I have a bottle of old Ram Black. Hey, Val. Hey, Iggy. Hey, it says I have three viewers now. You're not all fictional. Remember, if you're watching this on another stream, Peoples, I'm over at twitch.tv slash painting big. And I would love for you to come to my actual stream so that we can get Twitch cred. Twitch cred. Because we're growing. We're trying to grow. Yes, actually. We are doing pretty well. We got like nine subs yesterday toward my 30 sub goal that I wanted to hit within the next couple weeks if I could. So that I could add another day. So that we could go invade the Dungeons and Dragons category. <laughs> and do some miniature painting over there, dang it. There's way too many people just gaming. They need to paint their figures. Their virtual figures. <laughs> Yeah, I'm using coal black. Actually, I'm using the equivalent. Like, um, this is the old heavy gear. We used to use this. We used to have this as a license paint. And um, ram black's really close to coal black. So I thought maybe I'd do that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what I'm going to do, Val, is um, I've got it on my to-do list today to, to whip out one of my old Rackham Wolfen, which are, are sculpts that look a lot like your giant wolf. Um, they aren't made anymore. They're out of print, but it, they were amazing wolves. And, uh, I've got a ton of them I need to paint. So I figure I'd just whip one out and it's sculpted so similarly to yours. I should be able to kind of, you know, go step by step and show you what I mean. That's what I was thinking. Plus it gives me an excuse to whip out a wolf into paint. So, hmm. I mean, I dragged the things to California with me. I have three, what, two boxes of confrontation models, like old metal, French metal lead. Yeah. I need to paint those suckers or get rid of them. Wolf gray. All right, well, good. Then I can start with that. All right, I'm going to get some real black. Where is my pure black? It's got to be hiding out here somewhere. There it is. So I kind of figured out what's wrong with mustache dude, um, Aegon, and his mouth. Uh, I actually tried to make the face that he's making on my face this morning in, when looking in the mirror. That sounds silly. It was silly. However, I did come to the conclusion that his cheekbones just are not doing the right thing. Um, when you frown, your face pulls forward and scrunches up, and these lines don't appear. So it's actually kind of... The sculpt's a little bit weird, so that's why his upper lip looks odd, and I'm going to disguise that with paint, but first we're going to block in his armor. So I'll show you guys what I mean in a little, like I can do a little sketch to kind of show you. But, but I mean, essentially, if you look at my face in the camera, you know, the light comes down like this for the most part. The front of our face is flat. So we get shadow here. And what he's got is these super pronounced lines, you know, which on older faces you get, right? And I've got a little bit going on here. But you, these lines don't really become accentuated until you smile. So when you're frowning, you can watch, see, they disappear. So he's scowling. So he shouldn't have these like big pockets of muscle right here bunching up. So that's the issue is essentially his face should, he shouldn't have that, that crease right here. He shouldn't have this shadow here that's defining his upper lip. So once I eliminate that, I think I'm going to be much happier with Aegon's face because I'm pretty happy with it as it is. But that was bothering me that after David's like, does he have a mustache? And I'm like, wow, he does look like he has a mustache. Why is that? Oh, this is why. Sometimes when you're having problems with the face, just looking at your own in your bathroom mirror can really help because usually you've got good lighting in there. Um, and although it does minimize your shadows a little bit, if you're looking at the lines of the face and like kind of how things are put together, it can really help you paint better faces. So, all right, let's get, I've got pure black. I've got blue liner. I've got uh, ram black, which is equivalent to like Reaper coal black for all intents and purposes. Essentially, it's a black teal. Um, I thought I might use the black teal. 
just for changes. Because usually I use blue liner with red, and I like how it looks, but um, I don't think so. Val, when you're doing scars on faces, like at 28 millimeter, it just ain't working. Um, like, it's so hard to do a scar at 28. I mean, it's very, they're very obviously his cheekbones. If you look at, where's my glasses? Uh-oh, did I, did I misplace my glasses? Am I in trouble? Wait, I have extra glasses. This is the beauty of me ordering more glasses. I don't know where I've stuffed my other ones. They're probably out in the kitchen or something. Or I took them off when I hurried Kiri outside and I will never find my silver ones again. Man, this is why I need to order like six pairs of reading glasses. I start to understand all of my elderly relatives that I used to laugh at because they had 16 pairs of reading glasses. And now I know why. Because when the dog activates and you have to rush her outside, you put your reading glasses somewhere you have no idea where they are. Yes, yeah, so now we have the second pair of reading glasses, which will be perched precariously on my nose, as is the custom. Alrighty. So when I look at him, it's really just his cheekbones. See, I just, I minimized that, uh, the problem that I had is that if I highlighted his upper lip with the way that that was put together, he looked like he had a mustache or should have a mustache there. But the thing is, you have to highlight the upper lip. It's one of the places on a face where you really do need to highlight. See how naked and weird it kind of looks with just a shadow there? Um, so I do have to highlight it. Like on her, she has, let's see, that highlight on the upper lip, see? But she's smiling, so she has a little bit of a line there on her face that I've kind of de-emphasized because I want her to look pretty. Alrighty, so yeah, so we'll do that. But first, let's try to do some armor. Let's do it. Let's add a little bit of, let's just add a drop of water. I'm going to be wet blending this, and, and I do want coverage for my first uh, drops. So we're going to try the black teal. We're going to try the ram black, coal black, whatever you want to call it. Because I thought maybe a little bit of the greenish in it might really uh, work well with the black that's, uh, in the black and green that we've got, on, or sorry, green that we, ugh, red that we have on these models. Wow. I had kind of a tiring lunch hour. I was trying to get a lot done and I got overwhelmed by stuff. So my brain is getting, um, is needing some time to come back online. So what do I want to start with? I think actually I'm going to start with the teal and do the white and then I'm going to put in a lot of black and we're going to see what we can do. But I want to see this color. I want to see what it does. This is a very teal color. Also, Kiri has have been having a lot of issues today, guys, so apologies in advance if I uh, have to run her outside yet again. So let's just block in a bunch of this teal pretty much all over the place. And uh, it's a very dark teal. And that's why the fact that it is, however, dark and not a, a really a black teal. Like, if we put blue line around here, it would read as black. But this does read as a very dark teal. So we'll have to definitely go back in and shade with real black to get this to look correct. But we can at least block it in with the teal. All these tiny little scales. Little scales and scale mail. Okay, so get that blocked in. I'm going to block in the bottom. While I do that, it'll dry. It looks It's a pretty color, isn't it? Look how pretty that is. Yeah, it's, it's close to coal black. It's a black teal, essentially. Coal black may be actually a bit darker. This is really close to... The other um, dark teal colors that we've made that are close to this are actually in the secret weapon range. Their, um, their tire black or rubber black is also really close to this. Now, this is an unlabeled bottle. of um, You can see that it's kind of a teal, dark teal. If you don't have these, you can actually mix something similar by adding black to clear, um, to thalo green and clear blue. Or uh, clear green and clear blue blue if you want, although it doesn't get you quite as as much clarity. So, are we in focus? We, I think we need to focus a little closer. I want to be closer. Either that or I have to, like, actually get zoomed. Zoomed. More zoomies. We need more zoomies. There we go. So, yeah. It's a black teal. I'm just being careful. With these little tiny models, 
it just pays to paint a little slower and to try to be neat. It just saves you more touch-ups down the road, since everything is so tiny and persnickety. And I would say that this base coat is about, I want to say about 5 to 1. This paint is a little bit transparent because greens and blues don't really cover very well, even though black can cover well, depending on which black you're using. Um, but it does have a little bit of transparency to it. I'm just going to get the underside also. A lot of his ornamentation, arm guards, greaves, and stuff are probably going to be gold. Gold plated, because he's, you know, a king and all that. One of those silly Valyrian dragon lords. Although apparently viewed as cowards by all the other Valyrians, which quickly became um, obsolete when the doom hit. And the uh, Targaryens were left going, ha ha, we survived. But that's why there aren't any other dragons in the world at the moment. Is that they died in the doom. So apparently enough fire will kill a dragon. Because according, I believe, to the uh, atlas of uh, the world, it was a the doom was thought to be a gigantic volcanic eruption, mega volcano, or connected volcanoes. Do, 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 do. All right, so we got some nice blocked in black teal. I need to stay in focus. There we go. Point it out, use more fire. Yeah, just mix. I mean, it's, uh, you'll want a little bit more green than blue because blue is really uh, strong compared to the green. It'll overwhelm the green greatly. So if you want that greenish hint, you really have to go a little stronger. And yeah, that's not going to work very well. Hold on, I have to reload my brush. I got a little bit too zealous there. Had a little bit too much paint up the side of my brush. Try to get paint back in these recessed areas. Is where you really want that paint loaded up on the tip of your brush so that you can go back there without painting everything else around it. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to stick the tip of the brush in there. Block it in. Figure out if I'm getting in the right place. Going to move the model around. Remember if it's in, not in a comfortable position. Sometimes putting it in a comfortable position can enable you to hit an area that you otherwise couldn't hit. And sometimes you just have to throw a blob of paint in there and kind of flood the area to get the paint all over everywhere you want it. Doo -doo. Cut off a little bit of the bottom of the scabbard here, but I can put some water on that and clean it up. He's got a little ornamental uh, sculpting on his scabbard. He's, he's full of fancy, this guy. See it? I don't think hitting dragons with rocks works. Uh, did they take one out with a trebuchet, trebuchet? I don't think they did. All right. Let me grab some pure black and kind of shade that up. All right. It's going to be interesting to see what I do with this guy. As far as what his cloak's going to go, I kind of feel like it's going to go red on the outside. Unlike hers. I don't know. They're depicted in the art with red clothing or black clothing or a combination thereof. So I think I've got a fair amount of freedom with this. I'll essentially uh, block things in and then I'll uh, send Jim pictures and ask him if I'm on the right track. All right, so we're getting our white mixed up because we're going to do some white blending. No, no, Val, you're entirely wrong. When all else fails, like, slow down. Don't just close your eyes, pray, and throw something at it. Slow down. Take it slow. Step by step. Top to bottom. 
top down approach or bottom up approach. I guess there's some, there are some problems that are solved from a bottom, bottom up approach. So I'm blocking in some light. I'm wet blending essentially here to uh, try to get a generalized light on this armor. And because it's, uh, he's got his chest there, so it's rounded surface. And that's why we're making our highlight round and we're trying to keep it round. We can spread out the highlight a fair bit. But you want to do a generalized highlight before you start doing specific highlights. So yes, we have all of these cute little scales to highlight. It works for painting your craft landing days. Well, yeah. <laughs> Just slow me down and include a shot first. Grim, remember, remember the saying, friends don't let friends uh, paint drunk unless it's plaid. Then all bets are off. But slowing down is just like thinking about what you're doing. It's why, like, I'm not a sculptor, but if I had to sculpt a detail, it wouldn't scare me. I would just go really, really slow and look at a lot of examples. Then at least I'd be able to see my mistakes developing and could stop, could stop things. So let's see, hmm, will this highlight go all the way down? I think it'll it'll go down a little farther so I'm gonna take it down a little bit farther I do want I do want a fair bit I think I need to maybe mix a mixture of these colors and then I can use a little bit more glazing so I'm gonna mix a really pale teal like there That is one of the other things um, that we used to say, Grim. Those are both sayings from the old Imps mini paint group in Chicagoland that I used to go to. I think the, I don't know if the Imps are still around at this point. They're fictional. Yeah, they're fictional. Yeah, Sue kind of fell out of things and started focusing more on her writing, and uh, I don't know what Noelle's up to these days. Still painting, I assume. There's... And they used to have is saying that anyone who didn't show up for, like, a few months was fictional. Yeah, Adam Cat got fictional after a while, because he got a family and married and stuff. So at this point, it's all fictional. So at this point, everyone is fictional, because nobody has showed up for a while? Yeah. Hey there, Daffodur, how's it going? But yeah, we always, uh, the friends don't let friends drink, drink paint water, yes, but also friends don't let friends paint drunk, uh, unless it's plaid. We decided that if you're painting tartan, you have uh, you have a license to drink, but it better be scotch or whiskey. You don't want to offend the gods of tartan. So I'm just kind of broadening out my highlight here, I'm trying to get closer. You can see I'm just painting it roughly. New comic book day. Is it your favorite day, Daffodil? Is new comic book day your favorite day? I do not currently the only web the only comics I do right now are web comics so all right itchy nose all right there we go so now we're getting some light that's good now we need some dark to go next to our light although maybe I'll do no I'm gonna do dark first all right so I'm gonna take my pure black and thin it down we're just gonna do the chest right now I want to get the chest nailed <laughs> that and the payday yeah yeah i used to be um before i switched i i try to always use a very unique cup for my paint water cup because yeah otherwise i'm gonna put my i'm more likely to put my brush in into my drinking water i'm gonna do some black right next to our highlight, but with a little bit of a fade. So I'm putting in a line of black, kind of going down, kind of curving. Again, it's a curved area, so we're doing kind of a curved highlight, curved shadow. And then I'm gonna come in with another highlight. Let's see here, there we go. Now this is probably too broad of a highlight for this dark of an NMM. So we may have to shrink it, but we're, we're just blocking in right now. We'll block in and then we adjust. You guys are going to find out real quick as you continue to watch me over months 
and ages um, that I do a lot of blocking in and then I shift it. So I'm not perfect out the gate. I like apply something and then I stop and I look at it and I troubleshoot it and then I come back around, uh, come back around and adjust. So I'm blocking in highlights where I think they would go. The secondary highlight is going to be kind of a, um, a, an environmental reflection highlight. You generally are going to have kind of bands of highlight and shadow moving around a cylindrical object. And this is a cylindrical object. So we're going to, we're going to do that. We're going to be there. Now it's going to be a little hard to judge this and how well we're doing it as we go, because we still have a lot of primer on the model, right? So at some point we probably need to stop and block stuff in. But one thing I am going to do right now is I'm going to experiment with um, outlining, lining with my original teal color, my dark teal, around these scales that are in the white area. And I'm going to bring the black in as lining on kind of this middle teal area. Hey, Chibi. It's good to see you. So we're, we're going to, we essentially block in a generalized highlight and shadow, and then we come in with those darker colors and we try to bring back our little sculpted scales here. What we're doing is we're introducing more dark into an area that we've painted with a lot of light. So lined across the chest like that. So I didn't get a chance, guys, which models are um, currently winning in my um, in the next paint along vote. For those who are new, uh, my Patreon has a $15 paint along tier and we're about to finish our current model. And so I just put up a poll full of models suggested by my patrons about which ones we should do next. But I haven't had a chance to check it. So I am totally in the dark as to uh, what is winning. So I heard it was like three of them were up there, Kaz. So the Elf, the elf Warrior with the two-handed, two-hand, uh, two-hand, two weapon options. I like her with the shield. She'll be fun with, the shield itself is just wonderful. Like the rest of the model, I'm like, well, you know, not, not amazing, but like the, the shield is really good on that mini. I'm going to take this uh, teal, lighter teal, and clean up a couple of my lines that got goopy. Oh, Tara, the 75 millimeter declearman. The uh, bombshell. That's cool. Doing a bigger model would be pretty awesome. Very different for some people. Yeah. Maybe we'll do an opal. It's big enough to do an opal. There are very few gemstones out there that would be big enough to really do an opal, but we could do an opal on that shield. Like a black opal. But, um, but Chibi Mononoke is also, you know, awesome, cool. I don't know. I was kind of hoping that Chibi Mononoke would, uh, would, uh, be up there because, uh, I was, I was figuring out how I wanted to paint her ahead of Chibi Mononoke by one vote. Well, we still, you know, I just encourage, if you know people who haven't voted, just remind people, if you're in my $15 tier, get on there and vote. You don't have to vote for just one thing. You can vote for all your faves. Let's see. That's probably going to be a little bit too light. So now I've got some lining in there. So I went in and I hit the, hit the highlights. I'm going to come out here and hit the highlights out here on these little scales. Because we did a generalized highlight there, so now I want to come in and just kind of hit the tips of those, the tip of those scales. But that's a little bit too much right there. I can see it, just a little too much. So what I'm going to do is glaze a little. So we don't want this to go too steel. We want it to stay dark. So we have to keep a lot of it dark. So. Yeah, well, if we do the one with the, if we do that two weapon option, um, elf, I'm going to go for the shield, so be prepared. You can paint yours with the sword instead. Or I guess it's sword or spear, right? So we can choose. 
I, all I know is I definitely want the shield. So I'm going to take pure black and I'm going to align the areas that are darker. Scale mail like this, that's really fine. It can be a royal pain to make look okay. Because you've got to paint it as a mass like I did, but then you also have to get the scales right. I'm going to put these other Targaryens over away for a bit. And of course I'll have to do this again on his sister Visenya whose hair I still have to fix after I figured out that she had a horrible mold line that I missed, which is just par for the course. All right, get up here, Aegon. So I don't want to bring my black all the way up. Um, I want it to stay more around the dark teal. So I've gotten a little bit dark here on the chest, I think, but now lining has definitely darkened up the armor. We need to rally for Chili. Well, what I said before, and I think I said this in the post, is if we get two really different models for the top two, um, ones that I really like, uh, maybe we'll just, we'll do both. Uh, we'll just do them one after the other. I'm probably going to get that Chibi Mana in okay, even if she doesn't doesn't win, just because. Cool model. And I didn't realize how huge she was. That kind of makes it even more interesting. Mm, yeah, I don't like how light that is on the underside. I need to bring that down. So when we want that brought down, there we go, in focus. We want a glaze. So we're going to grab our black teal, build a glaze with it, so like half a brush full of that, and... Uh, couple brushfuls of water to make it colored water glaze glaze material right here this is actually pretty strong glaze but I know I want to knock it down a lot so I'm gonna paint it over the top and since it's actually pretty strong and it's gonna act more like a wash I'm gonna go in with my brush and kind of wick off the excess though just in case I've broken it you never know just want to be cautious when you're glazing don't trust that it's gonna act like a wash Uh, I'm painting. I'm paying Nerd House to print her for me, but uh, she's like a 110 millimeter figure, which I didn't realize right away. She's huge. I'm not a chibi painting expert. I would have to uh, look up some things to uh, paint her well. But I also would not want to do her in a strict uh, cartoon style. Like, I'd look up how to do chibi eyes. They're fun. They look like fun. They're anime eyes. There. Now I've kind of dull dulled down that side, um, side reflection. So I kind of like... This is looking okay. This is looking okay. But I think we need more black. You're late, you're late, Shadow Raven. That's all right. We are what we are. All right, so yeah. Ah, so we got to put in some shadows and some reflections. The problem with black is that everything is black. And so you need a lot of it to be black, to read black. And when you pop all that black in there, yeah, that's pretty sharp back here. So I need to work. I'm going to actually thin down my black and uh, put a kind of a strong wash of black back here on the back of there. So kind of uh, make this blend in a bit better with this black shadow here. I want a hint of light there, but I don't want a lot of it. So I'm going to grab some more black and I'm going to kind of block in these little scales up here. I want them to be a little darker. Since I need to put a lot of black on these scales to make the armor look black, 
I need to be really conscious of where my highlights are and uh, make sure that I minimize them a little bit. That's coming along a little bit better. Uh, sticky note with things to do. Maybe looking at adding a moderator. David is great. Nada was here. Yeah, we had planar. Yeah, I have planar and I have um, Justin Aso. Or sorry, David. Um, and David is sitting across from me currently, being a David. But I'm also working. He is working, yes. Well, anybody who wants to apply for the position of moderator on my channel, send me a message. I don't want to, you know, just beat somebody with the mod stick. I've got to have somebody who's a willing victim. Oh, you were a willing victim. Oh, was there a spam bot that I missed? Sorry about that, guys. We got a spam bot in here. Yeah, I'm not always watching you right. So, yeah, anybody who wants to be a, be a mod, send me a message. I trust all you guys for the most part. Anybody found abusing their power will be, like, berated soundly on stream. <laughs> with many stern looks. Okay, getting some of that light up. Yeah, if, if any of you who want to hit things with rocks are the people who are applying to be my uh, moderators, you might have to make a rock emoji. Putting a dark shadow back here. It's like his arm is coming straight out of his cape, and so I'm just, like, going to block that in. It's fill for the um, molding process. But that means I don't have to worry about any details back there. I think we need to broaden our highlight a little bit out into this area, though. Because I'm definitely getting a little bit too much black here. I need to bring it up. So maybe just little touches of lighter blue-gray. Just a little bit to get it spreading a little bit more across his chest like that. Went a little bit far on that one. So more like that. Picking up the scales as it travels further away from the chest. No, it's also a good point. Thanks for bringing it up. I didn't realize we had a spam bot hit us. And it is it is Twitch. We are going to get spam bots. We are going to get crazy talk. And we do need active moderators because Twitch is, you know, night bots like base mod is very annoying. I am just trying to get up a little bit more highlight here. So now I'm to the point where I'm actually looking at individual scales. And, uh... Just trying to hit like some of the outer edges here with a tiny little highlight. And maybe also like spam by spam bot or whatever. If I yeah, I didn't see the spam bots. That's a problem, is I'm painting so I don't always see uh, them. And so that's why having somebody else with eyes and the power to ban them would be good. Cause yes, David is often actually working. I know. Horrifying, isn't it? Ah, that's too light. So yeah, now after you block in everything, now you're working on kind of a scale-by-scale -scale basis, and this is where your brush control, or lack thereof, really starts to uh, get you, because as you're highlighting those little edges of these little scales, which you need to do, that you do need to do it to make it look right, um, it can uh, prey upon your sanity. Hey, Chateau. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing, uh, these are Dark Sword miniatures. Aegon the Conqueror, the first Targaryen to make trouble in Westeros, uh, and his two sisters. 
I am Anne. I work for Reaper Miniatures. I normally do Reaper stream on their channel, but this is my private channel, so I work on commission work. This is sister uh, Rainus, who I was working on. These are really small models, as you can see from my finger back here. Um, they're very delicately sculpted, so there's a lot of fine detail. And right now I'm using my brush to do tiny little highlights on the outer edges of these little scales on Aegon's black, chain, or black scale mail. Because apparently the Targaryens all went in for uh, black armor because it was menacing. You learn stuff, yes. So, sometimes it's painting stuff, sometimes it's dog stuff, sometimes it's random stuff. Yes, exactly. We talk food a lot because I like to cook and bake. And I'm on weird dietary restrictions. So, you know, we do talk food. And uh, we talk dogs because I have an old dog, and every once in a while I have to rush out and take her out. But in general, we're pretty chill. I am, uh, I've been painting for uh, lots of decades, I guess. I, I've been painting professionally, let's see, when did I sell, sell my first mini for money? A long time ago. 25 years? Yeah, 25 years. And I've worked for Reaper for about um, 17 years. It'll be 18 years next April. Hey, Lady B. Hey, oh, hey, more than dices. Hey there. Thank you for the tiny raid. It's adorable. <laughs> David, there's a spam bot. Come kill it. It needs to be like a spider or a scorpion. <laughs> He's smiling. He's like, we're interrupting his, his work, but that is pretty funny. Uh, you finally got to an end stream. Yeah, you did. I'm working on Targaryens. A Aegon is very... I'm very annoyed at his scowly face right now, and I have to fix it. So we're working on his black MM instead. Um, but yes. Hello, everybody. Yay, happies. We have more people watching us. This is fantastic. All right. So yeah, what we're doing. All right. Uh, where am I? Uh, yeah, I was just uh, putting tiny highlights on the edges of the scales moving away. And now I'm going to reinforce this shadow a bit. It's a lot of... So pure black, and uh, I don't want any of this. I used a black teal to start with, actually, for this instead of a uh, blue black. Yes, have fun, Kathy. Bye. Yeah, he's definitely scowly. I ran into a problem with his upper lip in which he looked like he really needed a mustache, but really I just needed to vanish this line in the sculpt, which wouldn't be there with a frowny face. I frowned at myself in the mirror to make sure that this was true this morning. Which is not not good. Like, you should always smile at yourself in the mirror in the morning, really. It's not very positive to scowl at yourself in the mirror. Hey, Jetta. Alrighty. Hey, we have viewers. Yay, thanks for refreshing, guys. Thanks for helping to up my viewer count. I really appreciate it. We are definitely trying to uh, get more peoples. Get more peoples watching us. Alright, so now I've kind of got this... But now I've got kind of a weird shape here. See, we've got a nice rounded curve on this side. But I've got kind of this area is kind of wonky over on this side, so I need to adjust that. Oh, this is Dark Sword Miniatures. It's not out yet, Lady B. This is one of the brand new um, Targaryen figures for um, for George R. R. Mas uh, George R. R. Martin Masterworks. So he's uh, Aegon was the first uh, troublemaking Targaryen in Westeros, and uh, he and his sister queens did make a lot of trouble. So this is Aegon the First, Aegon the Conqueror, as they call him in history of uh, that world. Sacrifice for your heart, scowl, scowl in the mirror. No, I like to be happy and love myself. I smile at myself in the mirror. I tell myself how awesome I am, you know. Because sometimes the world is not going to tell you how awesome you are. You have to tell yourself. And we like it when the world does tell you how awesome you are. You guys are all awesome. But, you know, smiling at yourself in the mirror helps. All right, so I wanted to eliminate that kind of weird oblong shadow here. So I'm going to take some black. Oh, Hey, Chateau Ruby, thanks for the follow. I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. Uh, but yeah, so so I'm trying to get a nice rounded appearance here. Um, and that's why I'm kind of like looking at this weird little... You see how it kind of goes... It, it kind of goes... It doesn't. It's not nice and rounded. It kind of has a weird oblong... It goes down a little bit too far here. So I really want to come in. Probably I want to turn the miniature around so I can have a much uh, easier way to look at it. Grab my black. And... Uh, Kind of check on that and uh, come in on the side and maybe sculpt these guys a little bit better with some paint. And I think it's like that little section right there. So let's grab black and thin it down into a little bit of a wash and paint it over that section. Let's bring it in black. Oof, that, that was harsh. See, black is... 
Black is always the last resort. It's so heavy. And you just, you, you hit it, your figure with it, and it just like, boom, just blows up your figure. So then if you want any subtlety after that, you have to go back and re-highlight. Uh, let's see here. I was going to say I would laugh. Yeah, I do. I still work for him. Actually, I'm still, I'm part-time now that I moved out to be with David. Um, but I still work for them, so that means that Ed can still forget my anniversary on April Fool's Day. Um, best work anniversary ever. I am really actually happy that I'm still working for Reaper and can keep that work anniversary because I really feel like it is the best work anniversary ever. You're never quite sure if they're going to say, hey, April Fools, we didn't really hire you or we, you really aren't still on the payroll. You know, it's that kind of thing. You always feel like it could be a surprise. Especially with how much of a troll Ed can be. But no. Reaper has always been awesome to me, so I'm very happy that I got to stay on the payroll. There we go. There we go. Nice and... All right, so now I'm much more rounded. So the black vanished a lot of stuff, and I came back in with some little highlights. Um, I do want... I still feel like I need to take that highlight down just a tad. It is showing up a little stronger on camera than it is in person. Yeah, this is a Dark Sword model, but Aegon's not out yet. These are actually the studio models that I'm painting. So once they're done, Jim can release the model, <laughs> which is why I need to move my butt. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's Dark Sword, but not out yet. Um, and then, actually, I think his sisters are just as good Lady B. So we've got um, Rainus here, who I'm also, like, a little bit further along with the painting of. And she's she's the happy sister. She's the younger sister who liked to fly on her dragon and uh, generally was a nice person, unlike most Targaryens. Ed is my... Uh, Oh, Ed is the CEO of Lady B. So if you watch uh, Reaper Live, he is the actual uh, CEO of Reaper Miniatures, and he does the Reaper Live show on Thursday evenings. Uh, and then we've got um, Visenya, who's the older sister and the butt kicker. Um, and she's just not, like, I haven't even gotten. I was looking forward to her most, so I decided to save her for till last. So she's got scale mail like Aegon does. Um, and they're a trio, and I need to get them all done for Jim, which is why we are painting them on stream. Every once in a while I take a break and do one of my own projects, but I really do need to get these done. Yeah, for sure, Lady B. But I have to paint to, like, the actual canon, and the canon is that Targaryens had white blonde hair in this age. So that's the problem with commissions, right? Well, commissions for, like, um, miniatures companies specifically. But I guess the people with their D&D &D characters can get just as demanding or more so. Um... But yeah, I mean, if I'm painting my own thing, I'm still thinking about maybe giving this chick, like, bright blue hair. This is one I'm working on right now. My bust. She's cool. She's gigantic, though, obviously. Not these tiny people. That's why you don't do commissions. Yep. Oh, yeah. Gem well, Gem Dragon's kind of muted, though. I mean, he's... Or he's kind of washed out, because he's, like, watercolor. Um, I did not, I painted the big 54 millimeter Daenerys. Um, the one with the little dragons coming out of the fire, the naked one on Dark Sword. The small version was painted by Marika and the 54 mil version was painted by me. <laughs> yes, Ed, Dave, and Ron are the senior people at Reaper Miniatures. Dave is our accountant and HR, Ed is our CEO, and uh, Ron is our art director and general artist wrangler. Yes. And they are all great people. And I worked with them for 17 years. 17 and a half years, technically. Almost, at this point. Alright, so that's alright. I want to get these blocked in so I can see the overall effect. The light's coming from above, so it's going to fall on this raised leg. So just like last time, we're going to kind of block it in with a little bit of white. Take our, um, our ram black or our black teal and kind of make that streak of light go right up the leg. And we're just going to block it in, then we're going to adjust it. Because all these tiny scales are really annoying to paint individually, and it wouldn't look right if we did it that way. So instead, we will do this. And I probably should have laid down a bit more teal before I did this this way. So I'm going to do that. Even me's make mistakes. There we go. 
There we go. Now we can blend it out nicely. So wet blending is a nice tool for this sort of thing. So you can get a quick blend. Yeah, Ram Black. Because I don't have Coal Black, um, Daffod Weir. I didn't get the, the holiday colors last time. I didn't snag them before I left. So, uh, I, but I did have a bottle of Ram Black that I kept back from the day. Um, you could also use um, Secret Weapon, like Tire Rubber. I do have that also, but I decided to just go with Go with my ram. It's close to coal, and a lot of people have coal. But I wanted to, I wanted to try black teal. Usually I do blue black when I'm doing black armor, but I wanted to try dark teal and see if I liked it. And so far I do like it. Oh yeah, you should totally post your Bat Batman bust. That sounds cool. Yeah, I don't have a 3D printer, Lady B. Not yet. We don't really have room in our little uh, little apartment here. Uh oh, I see a restless Kiri. I'm going to kind of keep an eye on her. She's been having a really bad day, guys. She's really had a lot of uh, accidents today and obviously is really uncomfortable. So, poor Kiri dog. I would give her a treat, but I'm afraid that would just exacerbate things. Oh, yeah. I, I use all Reaper paint except for, um, on occasion, lately, Lady B, I've been using... Scale 75 Artist, which is their tube paint. Just because. Just for giggles. But I actually am enjoying it. That head that I showed, the big bust head, that actually is painted in uh, Scale 75. With Reaper White, though. Like, I will never use a white other than Reaper Pure White. That's just the way it is. I want to do a couple of streaks of um, kind of color here. So, see? So, now we're starting to get more shiny. Now we're starting to actually look a little bit more realistic. I want, decided I wanted a little flare of highlight there. This is actually not looking bad. Like, I'm surprised how fast this is coming together. And now that I put the bottom part on, the top part makes more sense. And I can make the top part work a little bit better. Kiri Dog, um, she had cancer many years ago, Lady B. And, uh, so she still has, she had radiation treatment on her butt, <laughs> which means that her colon is, um, unpredictable. The side effect, she can still, she's still pretty good, but, uh, she definitely has good days and bad days. So today is kind of a heavy inflammation day for Kiri Dog. Grim, 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 grim. Oh, yeah. A nude mini. Yep. Yeah, they do. You're right. Yeah, she usually has... She often will have one bad day, and then she'll just kind of get a little bit better. Um, I had to switch her food recently because she wasn't eating her old food. And uh, it seems to have generally done a little better but you just it's so hard to tell like long term you know and she's old too lady b i mean kiri is uh heading up toward 13 years old now and she's a big dog so thanks chateau yeah isn't it amazing um how when you put like when you start to block in the highlights on the rest of it now it makes sense right now suddenly your eyes are like oh that's what's going on i always think that's so funny sometimes how the paint like just a little bit more paint in a little different area throw a couple highlights in suddenly you're like oh yeah yeah, it works. It's so funky. So I'm going to adjust that top highlight there. And notice how I just wiped out those uh, couple of highlight scales. So now the light comes down and it's in line with this. So now it's going to visually, like the eye is going to think this makes a little bit more sense. Oh yeah, she's been a good girl. I'm not going to feel like, I'll feel, feel sad when my Kiri goes because she's my heart dog. But she's had a good run of it. She's had fun. Lots of fun. I mean, we took her, actually, when I moved out here to California, we took her to the ocean for the first time ever uh, shortly after we moved because the beaches down at Santa Cruz uh, were open just for walking, and they're dog-friendly. So Kiri got to actually go in the ocean, which she never, you know, having been a dog in, like, upstate New York in the winter and then coming down to Texas, North Texas, there was never large amounts of water. But she did so good in the ocean, I was astonished. All right, so we're going to get some black, and we're going to just line a little bit into these highlights. Some of these highlights I'm going to take up higher, and some I'm going to leave a little lower. 
The one where his leg is forward is obviously going to get more light, and I'm going to go a little bit um, more subdued back here. Since this is kind of a light teal, I am going to bring in a, my dark teal for lining for some areas, not black. Black would be way stark. Oh, yeah. I mean, she, uh, yeah, she didn't like the fires out here, that's for sure. We, it's been nice the last few days, so we've been happy. She much like she likes the weather a lot. Otherwise, I mean, it's for once she's not like you know wearing a fur coat in a hundred and five degrees, right? Because Texas, um, and I like it out here quite a bit. I was born in this town, actually. I've just been away for you know most of my life, so it's kind of cool being here again. So now I've kind of interrupted that scale pattern just a little bit, and if it proves to be too much, I can bring it back. Um, but I do need a little bit of interruption. I do need to show that these are separate areas. So after you block in the highlight, which is pretty easy, um, then you come back and that's where your brush control gets tested as you come back in here. No, she has a fur coat because she's a dog. <laughs> oh, the smoke got to you on the East Coast. Wow. Yeah, it's been traveling. My mom said it passed over Wisconsin, like on the weekend. They got some smoke. Just so funky. When the fires are so big that they travel across the entire United States. The smoke gets to road trip even if we don't. So I'm going to bring in a couple of little highlights here. Boink. Boink. And of course, you know, if you can make sound effects, that's even better. Boink. Oh wait, that boink didn't work. Boink. Ah! I need to rewet my brush. <laughs> Let's see here. Actually, I think I need maybe a little more water. When your water, when your paint is not coming off of your super thin brush, it's usually because it needs a little more water to do so. Do, 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 do. But yeah, otherwise, uh, I am liking it out here. It's sad that we can't explore more because of the stuff, but yeah, blorf boink. I am just having a something or other. I don't know. It's kind of a day. Like I said, I, I ended up um, like doing a lot of stuff, trying to get a lot of stuff done on my lunch hour, lunch to you know, the hour before my stream. And then a lot of stuff like came in on email and I felt like overwhelmed. So I'm not surprised I'm having kind of a blurfy afternoon. It will subside. Mostly it's not my job, it's my, uh, my charity work that I do. My dog club. That is, uh, can be overwhelming at times. I do a lot for them already and then there's more stuff that comes in that I need to weigh in on. <laughs> this is funny, Grim. English, not your first language. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like Dragonlance. Like, yeah, you could do some of the armor like this. Or, or even, I mean, if it was dragon scale armor. All right, so we got a little bit of that. Let's see. Oh, we're up to 42, 42 peeps. Awesome. Thanks for coming over, guys. Thanks for hanging out. We're working on Aegon the Conqueror. We're trying to make his armor, like, look like more or less like black metallic, which is going to be interesting. We'll have to see. I may need to lower the highlights down a little bit. Although in person, it, it does look a bit darker. Let's see if I put a light background on it. Yeah, light background. This is more like it reads in person, guys. So sometimes the camera will just like grab at the light and it'll make it a little bit lighter, make it the darks look lighter than they are. But this is more like, so it is actually reading, I think, as a black metallic at this point. Um, we'll see as I add in other colors. Yeah, see how it bleaches out. Even the pure black gets to which is, this is great when I'm trying to show you guys what I'm doing for tiny highlights, right? So I don't mind that it bleaches out the darks a bit, but it does look a bit darker in person. Oh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks, 20 Side TV. It's good to see you. Yeah, we're trying to do the uh, that black scale mail that the Targaryens are supposed to have. Yeah, it does. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, I could put... I, I might have a white sheet of paper around here somewhere. I don't know. I don't want to, like... Uh, maybe I do. Down here on the printer. 
Let's see if I can put white behind him. It's going to darken everything to do so. Let's see. Then he's going to go too dark. See, that's the problem. It's like I got I got compromises, right? It's like can go way dark or slightly dark. I think before I was painting with one corner of the palette in the frame, and then it was perfect. <laughs> but uh, anyway, we'll progress. We'll progress. You guys get the idea. You get the idea what I'm doing. So yeah, the armor's coming along really nice. I'm really happy with this, actually. Ever since we blocked in uh, the bottom part, I think it's really pulling together really nicely. I still need to do some under-reflections on the underside of the arm here. Uh, and I need to pay attention to how far this highlight is going to go around the, the leg and maybe interrupt some of this uh, light teal with some darker color. Let's see, where am I? There I am. Focus. Focus! Oh, hold on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Adepticon is fun and ReaperCon is fun, and it's totally different ways that they are fun. Like, they're very different conventions. I like all the different miniatures vendors at Adepticon, and I'm hoping that we can get some of those people like Creature Caster to come to Archon in the future. I think it would be a good fit. Now that we don't have uh, Hangar 18 anymore, how are we supposed to get our fixes for bus and... Well, I guess I we have... Yeah, well, we've got FER. I mean, um, FER did come, or at least the people that were repping FER, and they have some nice bus. But yeah, Hangar 18 used to like import a bunch of the European stuff, and Tori would bring it with him, and we all got our, got our fix on stuff that we'd seen online but hadn't uh, ordered, and then we bought it. But, Was yeah. there somebody else that had FER? There was somebody back by Scale 75 that had FER last ReaperCon. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I know. We all are not getting our convention fix. Although online ReaperCon did work pretty well, I gotta say. It felt, to me, uh, like, a, like a paler, somewhat more subdued version of ReaperCon. Because it was, uh, in, in some ways, it was more manageable for me. Because I could choose whose room to go and hang out in after hours. Like, I liked the painting chat rooms. They were fun. That might be a little bit... Well, no, that might work, actually. Hmm, hmm. Right now I'm messing around with highlights, trying to figure out uh, how I want... How I want this highlight to travel. And how much uh, glazing I want to do. Yeah, taking you the tour of Reaper is really cool, Lady B. Oh, acting, asking, oh yeah, there's so many Shadow Raven. Yeah, um, did you, did you post it in Supplies Talk? All of us can, uh, can contribute. <laughs> if you, if you post a question about where to look for busts on the Supplies Talk thread, we will all jump in and go, look here, except, um, beware, it will be bad for your pocketbook. <laughs> However, if you're looking for, like, more like a, a beginning, a bust that'd be good for a beginner, I would actually recommend the one that I got for, um, I used it as an example yesterday. Uh, it's the Nocturna bus. She's really simple, this lady, the elf girl. She's, uh, she's really, she's got some nice detailing on her dress. Um, she's got really nicely sculpted hair. And uh, she's got a really nice face and lots of skin so you can practice on her. Um, oh, okay, you posted it in general. That works. But yeah, so something simple like this, like this is a Nocturna bust, but there's also a couple companies who do academic busts or just simpler busts. So it depends on what you're looking for. All right, I'm going to try to get some uh, delineation. Yeah, Adepticon has like um, a lot of vendors that uh, I'm tempted by. I'm mostly, I will say, Creature Caster, and they have a comp painting competition, too. Just getting in some little lines there to make those scales stand out a little bit better. Since I blocked this in, now I have to kind of define these little scales by adding a little bit of shading and break them up a little bit.
Although ReaperCon, like I say, ReaperCon's getting uh, really tempting with vendors lately. The last time there were, I mean, Scale 75 stuff, and then whoever was repping FER, and then you had Tori, who had a bunch of stuff, although they're not there anymore. We need we need a general, we need a store like Tori, though. Somebody else needs to do a Hangar 18 type store. Or we need to find that person online that's repping all that stuff and uh, get them to come to ReaperCon. Like, maybe, Mr. I wonder if Mr. Lee's Miniatures goes to cons. Though they're in England, aren't they? So they wouldn't be a, a good ReaperCon uh, ad. So now we're, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. So we lightened up the leg there a lot. I think I might need some pure black now to come in and interrupt some of this teal stuff over here. Thank you. Thank you, Megapedia. Yeah, I've been working on... Uh, that is that is the... Everything in the beginning is just a block in, right? And then you go back in with your razor brush and your very thin paint and uh, you try to break up your surfaces appropriately. Although I think I need to add a little more water to my black. Yeah, it's a little strong. Gonna drop some water onto it right on the model first. Whenever you've got a paint that's too strong, if you hit it before it fully sets, you can actually scrub a little bit of it up, make it a little paler. And uh, erase your mistake. It's the eraser. Water is the great eraser, at least before the paint fully cures. Once it cures, then it's paint over, paint over time. Yeah, that would be it. Your your own best off uh, best. Um, customer exactly well that's the danger of opening a game store in general right that's uh that's why so many game stores go out of business is that people open them but they treat them like a pet project and not like a business like they're high it's just that hey i've got my hobby and i can order all this stuff there we go that's a little that's pretty good let me look yeah yeah i feel like i still need more dark more dark And I'm going to throw some water into my black since we decided that black was too strong. Reaper pure black, pure black is very, very strong. It has very high coverage, even when thin. So. Now we're going to get back in focus. There we go. All right. Let's get these little black lines and shadows going in here. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should put, well, I probably want to put a little bit of a black shadow here, right down there. Really darken it down. Really darken it down. Yeah, to go up against that so that there's contrast. So like that. Yeah, I like that. All right, cool. Now I can bring up the edge. Let's get that edge there. I might want a little bit of teal in my white for this one. I don't want to bring it up too extremely, but I do want to do tiny little highlights just along the edge of the scales here. Kind of bring up just little touches like that. I missed this spot. And I think I've got, yeah, that's about right actually. That's pretty good. And then a little bit of white off on this other leg. Probably, I started to do it, but it probably needs a little bit more, so. And it looks like I've got just a really straight line here, so I need to work on that. I need to bring in actually some teal to uh, kind of break up these little uh, scales a little bit. That may be too light. Let's see. So if I can just put some uh, color there, I may actually need to glaze though. Let me grab some pale teal. Megapedia, thanks for the follow. June, I thought I recognized you from before, Mega. Are you new? 
If you are, I can introduce myself. I work for Reaper. If you know me from elsewhere, then, well, welcome back. There, so a little bit of just um, kind of blocked in teal there. But yeah, I work on a bunch of stuff on this stream. Like with the other things we've been working on, this is my own personal stream. I, otherwise, I stream on Reaper Miniatures. Um, so twitch.tv slash Reaper Miniatures. But uh, other things that I've been working on are our giant, uh, giant, our Valkyrie project. Here, let me let me zoom out, take a break from Black and MM, and uh, make Mr. Horse come into focus. So our big, big metal horse is a huge metal model. And uh, he has a Valkyrie a paladin, but I'm making her a Valkyrie. And I was doing her skin tones the other day, or starting on them, so that uh, I can bring her, start bringing all the colors into this piece. Oh, you just, oh, okay, you just started streaming a few weeks ago. Awesome, me too. I have, I have only been streaming for about six weeks. Uh, at least, I've only been streaming for six weeks here on Painting Big. Um, I was painting, I was streaming on Reaper before that for about a year and a half. And that's what made me think I might just do my own thing. Uh, but yeah, so Valkyrie project is one of the things we're working on and I'm making a big display base for her. And then, uh, I'm also probably going to be working on a couple of my big busts. So like this one is the one that I was showing earlier, which is from Mr. Lee's miniatures, which is very science fiction. And I have to fix my highlights because I'm really annoyed with her, <laughs> but I like the face. So at least I like part of it. Um, so she'll appear on a stream here or there. And then the other, the other bust that I really like that I'm, uh, going to work on is this one from uh, black sun. He's big orc with awesome bone axe. He's got another ax out here. I just, uh, haven't, don't have it on right now, but yeah, so that kind of thing. And I also like when I do commissions, sometimes I'll do games workshop, sometimes, um, Reaper, you know, so I do a fair amount of my commission work on the stream as well, because that lets me, you know, do both things, right? It lets me get commissions done and also lets me cover topics that I might not otherwise. Oh, Aisle, thank you for the tiny cheer. It's awesome. 100 bits. Thanks. There is uh, not, <laughs> I'm sure that we could have like, you know, you just need, actually there would be, wait, there is a zombie George figure. And I think Kiri is keeping me from bringing it out. I even have one. Um, Matt Pietro painted me uh, a Reaper zombie chibi guy as a thank you for getting him to ReaperCon. So I actually have a zombie George painted by Matt Pietro, Famous dude. And it's an, it's a cool little zombie too. Um, I'll, I'll get him out actually. He can, he can be our mascot so we can wave him around when, uh, zombie George comes to tell us there's a new follower, a new cheer or something. I just remembered I had that. I'm like, we do, we do have a zombie George. Um, but yeah, 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 all those, I love big, I love big models, which is why, um, painting big is what I named my stream, uh, mega. I do, I mean, I've been painting the 28 mils for literally decades. Um, I have a golden demon from back in the day, two golden demons, um, from Games Workshop from, uh, 2002, back in the, the eons ago. That was the first time I won a national level competition. And since then, I've just been pretty much working for Reaper, um, doing some commissions for Dark Sword miniatures here and there, doing staff painting for Reaper, uh, just kind of keeping my hand in until I met this awesome mini painter guy and decided to move to California and move in with him. Uh, so now I just work for Reaper part-time, and uh, I stream for them is how I work for them. And then, yeah, I'm a freelance miniature painter now. It's how I make my living. So Twitch is a large part of that, and so is uh, my Patreon. Which is, which is patreon.com slash painting big. So if you are trying to turn this into a, uh, a decent part-time job, I can tell you it is totally possible. In fact, I've, I've been known to tell people at my paint club back when I worked at Reaper, we had paint club every Saturday. Um, but that mini painting is actually an excellent part-time job. It's an excellent side gig. There's always people who love miniatures who want well-painted miniatures that, uh, don't have time to do their own. So if you uh, don't mind painting what other people think is awesome, then you can actually bring in a fair bit extra. Oh, cool. Yeah, we're in the bay. We're in, uh, we're in Mountain View. Well, where I actually, I was born in Mountain View. And so now, you know, ages later, I'm back. Um, but yeah, so we're down here in South Bay. Cool, Mega. Well, when I uh, eventually, after all the COVID crazy is over, I really want to do some in-person um, seminars. So like, stay tuned. 
You love it, so you do it for free. Hey, that works too. I used to do that. Back when I worked at the game store when I was um, just out of college, I would paint just for my friends who wanted to, if they wanted their general to look really nice for our Warhammer games. Uh, I painted uh, generals for a couple of my friends for their armies. Then I realized, though, that I could uh, make some money at it if I put minis on consignment at the store, so I started doing that. <laughs> Oh, cool. Bay Area represent. Exactly. You're in Walnut Creek. I don't know where that is. David, where's Walnut Creek? Oh, I should know where that is. You should know where that is. David used to live in more actual San Francisco proper, but then that place was pretty small for uh, um, for him and me and uh, a dog, so we moved. Uh, he moved out here. And I really do like it here. I like the climate. There we go. So an extra layer of level of highlighting off on the, the hip there. And we blended it in a little bit nicer. So now we've got a, a more of a transition going up here. So that's nice. Um, we've got that in. We've got darks. It still looks like dark armor because most of it is dark. This is the key. Northeast of Oakland. Oh, okay. So you're up up there. So you're kind of on the way like if I wanted to drive from here to Sacramento. Okay, yeah. Cool. Just moved from North Beach at the beginning of the year. Oh, okay, cool. So you also were, I, I moved in April from Texas to here. So uh, moving during COVID, fun, fun, huh? <laughs> but yeah, so it's cool. It's, yes, it's nice to meet you. I, I like to connect with other painters in the area wherever I am. So I really am waiting for the, the pandemic silliness to get, you know, toned down a bit so that we can like get together and paint with people and stuff like that. There's another Reaper painter up by you. If you're near Oakland, is Derek Schubert. I don't know if you know the Reaper painters much at all, but if you follow Reaper miniatures, eventually you'll hear about Derek. He uh, he does actually he doesn't paint as much anymore. He sculpts. He sculpted a lot of the Pathfinder line recently for Reaper. Very very good at sculpting and painting. I keep trying to get him to paint a bust just to see what he could do. There we go. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this armor. Oh, cool. Yeah, up in Adams. Okay. Oh, all right. Yeah, Bay Area represent. Man, we've got a whole bunch of you guys. All us guys now. I have to. I have to, see, I have to drop the y'all out of my speech and start saying us. Ah, still adjusting. Still adjusting. It's been so weird though, moving to a new place when you really can't go out, right? And you normally would get, you'd get out and explore, but you can't really get out and explore very well. So mostly I've just been walking. So I'm learning the neighborhoods better, the neighborhood where I am. And we've driven a little bit. Like we went down to Santa Cruz and we went uh, to take Kiri to the ocean and we uh, went up to um, <laughs> Catland, as I call it, Los Gatos um, for dinner one night. So before the fires. And we went up to Big Basin before it burned. I was really glad we got to see the trees before the fire moved in. Dan's Roving Paint Club. We're seeing a new game store every week. That would be a bit. That would be a little too much for my energy levels, Amy. Ah, I screwed this up. I, I went in too much. Too much black. Gotta fix it. Sometimes you'll do that. You'll be like, I'm very happy with this. And then you add one more touch and you're like, oh no, I'm so unhappy with this. This is the reality. This is the mini painting truth. Yeah, I'm just going to try to do this, and I can knock it back if I want. It's a little better. Iveta? Iveta. You, your family has a cafe in Santa Cruz, 20-sided. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> I was, uh, Reaper is in Denton, Texas, which is about a half hour north of Dallas, Megapedia. So I lived in Denton um, and worked for Reaper for many, many years. 17 years. 17 and counting, since technically I still work for them remotely. I want to bring this down a little bit. My lines are messed up in here. This is the problem with having tiny details. Yeah, it's a little better. But I feel like I screwed up this one here. 
Yeah, that's a little bit. Yeah, I've got a little bit dark now in there. But yeah, I liked North Texas a lot. Um, Denton is a college town with uh, North Texas University in it, among others. Um, and uh, it, it reminded me a lot of Madison, Wisconsin, which is where I went to college. And also where I worked at the game store I worked at. Um, I'm originally... I was born here, but uh, my family moved uh, pretty quickly. My dad was in the Navy, so we ended up uh, eventually in Wisconsin, which is where I grew up. So I'm a Midwesterner by growing up, but... Uh, Californian by birth and Texas from the last 20 years or so. <laughs> yeah, it is a nice town. It is, yeah. Denton has a lot going for it. It has some, some yummy, tasty restaurants. Like, when you come for ReaperCon, you got to hit at least one of the yummy, tasty restaurants. And, of course, it's only, you know, 45 minutes north of Fort Worth, which has some really nice restaurants if you're into eating, which I am. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, I've driven across it because I... Um, I went out to visit my folks in Arizona. They snowbird from Wisconsin to Arizona uh, in the winter. And uh, so I drove it a couple times. Oh, no, that one, that one, out of control. I keep trying to touch up this area down here, and it keeps fighting me. And I have to watch it, because if I use paint that's too thick, I'm going to start uh, having to fight against, like, detail, like losing detail. So I need to be careful. There, it's a little better. Um, SMU is, um, University Park, I think. Denton is, um, uh, UNT. University of North Texas. And, uh, there are lots of conventions in Denton. But now that we have the convention center and the convention hotel in Denton, which Reaper actually helped fight for, because a lot of people in the city didn't want it. Very short-sighted people, I think. But that's just me. Um, but yeah, now we can have... Now we have a proper convention center for ReaperCon, which is really exciting. There we go. Now we're getting... Now we're getting some nice. So I'm trying to bring some pure white highlights kind of up the ridge of the leg here. So we can get that proper shiny effect going on here. Over 30 years. That's all right, GB. You gotta get back for a ReaperCon. Gotta get back for Rupercon. We need more chibis entered in the painting competition. And and you are uh, the person I know who uh, can fulfill that requirement easily. Being a chibi fan. Or chibi. I don't know if it's chibi or chibi. I always thought chibi sounded cuter, so that's what I called it. You've told the husband you need to go. Yes, we'll plan for next year, Labor Day. By then, we should have something, some sort of inoculation against the uh, dire disease. We should be able to go to conventions again. That's my hope. I want a little bit more black over here, I think. And I need a more, more dark blue here. It's a fine balance when you're doing these details, these really tiny details on this stuff. When you're trying to keep it dark enough, but you need it to be bright enough, and you put a highlight in, and it's a little bit too much, and then you have to knock it back and kind of, like, look at it a ways away. Right now, that white spot is reading is way too strong. The faces are larger, so you enjoy them more. <laughs> it's true. Oh, yeah, up in Adams, definitely. Yeah, oh, actually, it's in actuality. ReaperCon is one of the... If you are into the hobby, it honestly is, I think, the best hobby convention on the planet. Um, it, our people... Everybody's just so friendly. I mean, it's over a 1,000 people now, but you wouldn't know it. It still feels like a, a small con. Um, and, uh, and just everybody's so nice, and I don't know. I always enjoy it. Even though I have to... Technically, I'm working at it most of the time. Um, I always enjoyed seeing everybody... There's so much enthusiasm for the hobby, and there's, you know, and, and there's uh, so much open-mindedness about different ways to paint and styles, and everybody loves to see what everybody else is working on, and, and it is focused around the classes, so it's not uh, just, like, kind of, like, where classes are tacked on 
with the gaming, right? That we're so. <laughs> hey, Ify, I'm glad you made it. Hey, we're at 43 viewers now. Awesome. Yeah, we're getting close, close to the end now. I'm starting to think I need to make these things two hours. Oh, three Chibi Cthulhu's. Adorable. Cthulhu is one of the things that really does well as a chibi. I have some adorable little Egyptian gods that are chibis. I really do need to paint those. They probably wouldn't take long. I have a little Anubis, a little Bast, and a little, um, I think it might be Set, or it might be, um, the Crocodile God. I can't remember. I'll have to look. But there we go. So that's reading a little better. I still feel like that's a little strong. I can bring in my teal, put some water on it, maybe damp down that one scale. That's the level we're at, where we're just like putting a wash over one scale. <laughs> then you know you're maybe obsessing maybe a little bit. Maybe so back. Yeah, yeah, that's the right, that's the right word, Chibi Amy. I'd have to find him and look at him and find out what he is. There we go. Yay, I think I balanced that out. That's looking pretty okay. I'm liking this. All right, so now this is a gold bracer, I think, and that's going to be a gold bracer, but I still have a little bit of scale up here. This looks pretty good. I might might want just a little more highlight. Yeah, I wonder where I put them. They're in one of my boxes, the, the little Egyptian chibis. If I find them, if I dig them out or, or to rediscover them, I'll uh, put them aside so I can show you guys. They are adorable. I forget which company... It was a company at Adepticon that I got them from. There's a, there's a people, people that do just chibis, like do all sorts of them, like hundreds. And, uh, I saw the Egyptian ones and they were really well done. So I had to have them. Oh yeah. Oh, hi, Up and Adams. Yeah, that this uh, isn't it ridiculous. Yeah, this is um. So I I do two different companies that I adore, um, and up until recently, the only thing I used was um the Da Vinci Maestro size one series ten. So the series is ten. There's a, that's the regular round, and the size is one. Uh, and I love this brush because it also has a dangerous tip. And it's, it's, I like long, narrow brushes because I like to do fine detail with really thin paint. So this one is the one I'd used for, like, seriously, for competition painting for 20 years. I've used nothing but the Da Vinci Maestro Series 10 Size 1. Until recently, this brush is much larger, so much larger uh, than that. It is also a Size 1, but it is a Raphael 8408. It's also a Kalinsky Sable, so they're both very high-grade uh, Sables. Um... But yeah, it also has a killer tip. I'm just really liking the fact that I can hold on. Like, what I typically do is I don't even dry it off after I rinse it. I just kind of squeeze the water out with my finger. I've gotten to the point where I can just do it with the corner of my hand. Uh, and then I just reload it. So it's still got a little bit of moisture in the body. It helps my paint keep going for longer. Um, and yeah, like I said, the, the tip is just wicked good. Like, look at that thing. Like, the fact that I can do eyeballs with a brush like this is ridiculous. Yeah, maybe it's impact. Yeah, maybe it's impact. Yeah, if it's the big chibi people at Adepticon, and D. Clearman, you were there, so you would know. Um, if that's that huge chibi booth, um, then yeah, that would be where I got. Impact miniatures would be where I got where I, my Egyptian gods then. But yeah, Up and Adams, totally um, love these brushes. I also have the Zero uh, Raphael 8408, which is a lot more like my Da Vinci Maestro. And I sometimes reach, if I need a tiny brush, if I really want to try using a tiny brush, I do also use the... Series 10 size uh, triple lot from Da Vinci as well. But those are, right now, those are my two favorite brushes. And like I said, up till recently, it was only the Da Vinci Maestro. I was totally a Da Vinci fangirl. Um, but then I really just started, like this brush, I don't know, I broke it in or something. Like when I first used it, I didn't like it. But then after I used it for a little while, I just, it just really got used to it. I really am liking it now. Yeah, so both those brands are my favorite brush brands. I've used the Winsor & Newton Series 7, um, and I've tried other people's Rosemary's, though I don't have any of my, my own. There's so many good brushes out there. I feel like it really is uh, just find the right shape and size for like your painting style and just go. Just go. Like, There's no right or wrong answer with brushes. It's, it's all like what works for you. But personally, I love this brush. I adore it. 
I have backups now so that if it if it ever dies because I had to trim a couple of errant hairs off of it earlier so if it ever dies I'm good yeah it's the shape of the brush so what uh and it depends on usually it depends on the line but but so what you really are looking at here is a very tapered brush like this is uh it has an extreme taper to it. And there are certain brush uh, shapes that are like that. And you don't want anything that's an actual liner that's too long. I think I have an example. Do I have an, yeah, I have an example of a liner. Hold on. So what you don't generally want is you don't want... And these are called liners or they're called... Um, I forget the other thing that they're called. But here. So here's a Da Vinci Maestro Series 35. And this is their long, narrow, you know, liner thing. The problem with this one is that although the tip is razor sharp, um, you don't have enough body with the bristles to carry enough paint and keep it wet for long enough. So I find this one a little problematic. Plus, without the the, the wide uh, base, it tends to be bendier. It's a lot bendier. It doesn't string doesn't um, spring back quite as nicely. So I can use this, but I I tend to find I have to keep the brush really wet to get the results that I get with this just using it normally. So. Oh, Chibi, did you find the Impact Miniatures Egyptian Gods? Are you now going to have to spend money? Is that why you're blank blanking at me? With many exclamation points? They're beautiful, aren't they? Like, the little Anubis and the little Bast are absolutely adorable. Like, I really want to do... Guys, I really want to do a little Chibi diorama with little tiny Egyptian temples. One of them like a little dog house, and one of them like a little cat hut. And essentially do cats and dogs <laughs> living together, mass hysteria. <laughs> Yo, do you like that idea, David? No, I removed it. It should be Amy. Oh, yes. So many. Oh, no. We shouldn't have showed you Impact Miniatures. I didn't even think about that, Chibi. Oh, no. The, quick, quick, close the browser window. <laughs> Poor girl. Oh, no. I've, I've, I, I take full responsibility. <laughs> Don't send me your bill, but I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well... There you go, Chibi. There you go. Hopefully you find something you really like. Hopefully you can exercise restraint and just be really happy that, you know, there is indeed a place like Impact Miniatures and you, you do have to drive home and you can think and rethink. <laughs> Good girl. All right. Have a safe dive, drive, Chibi. Yeah, I'm about, to, I'm about to wrap up. It's almost time to take Kiri out. And we've got this, uh, we got this armor looking pretty darn good, guys, I think. Like our... our you know, black metallic uh, scale mail. I'll find the true test will be when we start to lay in like um, like the red cape and things like that. Um, and if I put like black back here behind him, I'm not certain what color things are going to be back here yet. Um, but I'm going to have to be careful to make sure that it it you know stays looking like black armor. So yeah, thanks Chateau Ruby. It was nice to meet you. We'll see you later. I'll be back next week. I'm hoping to add out Thursdays into my rotation, but I'm trying to get a few more subs before I do that. So. Uh, for now, it's Tuesday and Wednesday at about 4.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so 2.30 p.m. for us out on the West Coast. But yeah, for all the new people, thanks for the follows. It was really nice to meet you. Um, and yeah, we'll just uh, pretty much stop here. Oh, yep, Kiri just lifted her head. That's about right. Yeah, I think he's coming along. I'm, I'm very happy. So now I know that I can do it on the other model. Um, and I'll just duplicate it, which is nice. But that's nice when you're painting things that are all the same color, right? So there we go. But yeah, you guys have a fantastic day. And I will be on Reaper, of course, tomorrow. Uh, if you have time in the morning at 11.30 a.m. Central on Reaper Miniatures Twitch. So, uh, so twitch.tv slash Reaper Miniatures. Um, I hope you all have a lovely day. I will talk to you later. Oh, I find my button. Find my button. Have a good day, everybody. Fading out.
Everyone says they want to change the world. Everyone. I've avoided, I've avoided using black um, or, or going back brown here for a while. What? What's happening? Another one. <laughs> Painting big. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, we're painting very, very small. <laughs> um, th these, my hands, are actually huge. These are like pizza plates. I'm not going to show them on the actual webcam, but... But don't worry, painting big, I am painting big. <laughs> Definitely not painting with a size uh, double zero brush. <laughs> uh, anyway, painting painting big. Thank you so much uh, for the raid. 25 people, welcome aboard. Um, okay, I, I know there was people who've said things to me, and I'm sorry I've missed them, everyone in the chat. Uh, please at me. Um, I, I miss so much uh, because I'm, um, I just get sort of tunneled in on, on this thing. Are you, are you uh, Britain or American? I'm an American. Uh, I spent a, a lot of time in Britain during college. Uh, uh, spent, spent a long while over there with some friends. Loved it. Um, and uh, uh, traveled there Reese, a couple, what was it, two or three years ago with Corey Godby and my wife and, and, uh, and Aaron Godby. Um, and we toured the, the countryside up in the Lake District and then went up to Scotland and stayed for a little bit in Paris and London. And um, just really love uh, uh, the UK and, and uh, Euro um, Europe in general. Um, obviously, it's going to be tough to get back anytime soon, but we really miss it. Uh, have enjoyed it every time I've ever been. Would love to take the family back to Switzerland at some point. Um, yeah, I would have a hard time picking out like my favorite place in Europe, um, but... Um, yeah, the Lake District in England uh, was wonderful. The south, the coast, the southern coast of England was wonderful near Dorset. Um, we had a, we just stayed in some lovely bed and breakfasts down there and just really enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure to people there, they're they're probably like, "What? It's always gray. Why are you saying this?" But I, um, I've always really liked it. Um, and then, um, yeah, Switzerland is is definitely one of my sort of top five. In, uh, the area around Interlaken in Switzerland is, is one of my top five places I've ever traveled and would love to travel back to. Let's see. So yeah, now we're adding a lot more of this really dark black to go ahead and commit to some, some uh, low contrast, or excuse me, low saturation, 